Uh, why don't we get started? Um, don't want to wait too long here. So uh, good day, everybody. Welcome to um, the MET Plus training series. I'm going to be giving a brief introduction, and then we will talk about how to set up the, the tutorial um, environment, and then we will um, go into breakout rooms. So um, uh, basically, our schedule for today is, as I already said, the intro and, and getting set up. Um, we will demonstrate how to get set up for all of the different environments, and uh, we'll be providing the logins for the cloud um, during the, um, the breakout room hands-on session later uh, this afternoon. Um, we will also um, then uh, next week be talking about some um, tools that are very useful for getting started with uh, using MET Plus. On the 14th, uh, we will actually dive into using um, one of the core tools of MET Plus, GridStat, um, so that you can learn how to do gridded analyses. On December 21st, um, we'll just have a Q&A um, session just so that people have an opportunity to, to ask some of, um, you know, basic questions uh, after uh, seeing some of the tools already. We'll be off on December 28th for the holidays and start back up January 4th uh, using the, um, uh, excuse me, uh, looking at using point-based observations for evaluation. Um, and then the 11th is, uh, we'll be looking at ensembles. The 18th is um, looking at using object-based diagnostics. Um, January 25th is um, the American, the week of the American Meteorological Society meeting. And so um, some of, I, I know that there will be people participating in that. So we don't want to necessarily be doing a, a training that week. However, um, we'll try and have a, a Q&A session um, for, you know, so that you can ask questions about the January session next. And then um, in the, in February, we'll uh, start diving into evaluation of tropical cyclones and using our series analysis tool on February 8th to um, look at the, the um, errors um, with, you know, geospatial um, representation, so on maps and, and so forth. Um, that is like the, the first eight um, sessions uh, with a couple of Q&A sessions um, thrown in there. And then after um, February 8th, we'll dive into uh, things like um, subseasonal, to seasonal, um, and uh, the use of, of some of the other tools and diagnostics and so forth. But we're, we want to see how far we get, um, you know, uh, during the, this first um, round of, of sessions. And then we will set up the, um, the second round of sessions um, in January based on feedback from um, all the participants. So um, just uh, some logistics here. Uh, feel free to, um, during these sessions, write your questions into the chat. So I've, I have here, um, you know, where, where you can um, uh, open up chat and, and write your questions in there. Um, during the hands-on session, uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand um, and then unmute once you've been called on. So um, here's how you raise your hand. Clearly, that's how you mute. Um, at this point, I would um, like to recommend that everyone uh, put yourself on mute if you haven't already done so, so that we don't have any background interference. Um, if when when we're doing our hands-on sessions, if you have an extended problem that we need to um, work with you individually on, um, we will um, bring you into a breakout room. Um, and just so you know where the breakout room uh, area is, it's uh, you can get to it with this triangle, square, and circle if you click on that. Um, okay, so diving into a little overview of Met Plus, uh, why why do we want to use Met Plus? Um, primarily, it's because um, it, MetPlus provides a um, comprehensive and, and unified tool um, that should provide a consistent set of metrics across multiple institutions. And it allows the researchers and operational scientists to use the same verification language, um, as well as an opportunity to train people on verification best practices. Um, MetPlus itself um, is a, a, a framework that is a suite of Python wrappers around MET at its core. Um, and then we have uh, 
uh, an analysis um, system that has database and display systems as well as um, you know some plotting and, and so forth at um, underpinning that analysis suite. We have communication between MET, the model evaluation tools, and Python algorithms to make um, uh, the, the tools more extensible and flexible and be able to read in data formats that um, we typically uh, um, do not have support for. And then we um, use something called Manage Externals to connect all the repositories together. Um, there's over a, a hundred traditional statistics and diagnostic methods um, for both point and gridded data sets. Um, we have 15 interpolation methods. Met Plus has been applied to many spatial and temporal scales and um, uh, basically with the config files that we have, the configuration files we have, it makes it um, easy to share those config files to reproduce results once again across um, multiple institutions. Um, over in the, the lower left-hand corner, th that's just an example um, of uh, the examples are what we call use cases that we have in development. The larger the, um, the word, the, the more examples that we have available. But we um, have a full gamut of um, examples, everything from high-resolution modeling, um, which is uh, short-range weather, convection allowing models, to um, sub-seasonal to seasonal, cyclones, um, space weather, marine cryosphere, and so forth. Um, we also have object-based methods, um, which, as I said, we'll be um, looking into in, in February. Uh, we have um, the ability to, to, uh, to define scorecards um, and, uh, and then um, you know, do plotting, such as um, uh, performance diagrams and, and so forth, which are, um, which are uh, synthesis-type diagrams. Ooh, next. Um, here are all of the, the different repositories. So this is a laundry list. I'll be making um, these slides available to you. Um, the, we have um, the repositories uh, broken up to make it um, much more extensible and, and flexible. Um, so the, the Python wrappers that, that, um, consist, uh, that are um, the, the primary framework um, you can find it at um, github.com, DT Center, and then Met Plus. The core statistical engine um, is in the Met repository on GitHub. And then we have the, the analysis suite, which is broken up into several different um, uh, sets of, of code base. Um, Met Viewer and Met Express are user interfaces. They um, rely on MetDataDB, MetCalcPy, and MetPlotPy for the, um, the database um, and other utilities, as well as um, the, the um, aggregation of the statistics and the plotting of the statistics. Here's another example of MetPlus and, and the data flow. Um, you can see that uh, depending on what type of data you have, um, you will pass those data into specific tools. MET um, was originally designed to be very Linux style in the fact that it has very focused, um, you know, uh, tools that, uh, you know, do a, 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 a set of, of functions um, that uh, are, you know, kind of focused on one particular um, capability and then um, it's expected that you will string those um, tools together using um, scripting. So if you have gridded forecast data and gridded analysis data, um, then you would be um, passing your, your data into the grid to grid tools. Um, okay. And we support grid one, grid two, CF compliant, net CDF. <laughs> and, um, and in some cases, uh, HDF5. If you have point forecast data, and point observations, and you would be um, passing that into to our stat analysis tool, which is the point-to-point -point tool. If you have gridded forecast data and point observations, then you would be passing those into the grid-to-point tools. After, um, <coughs> excuse me, Matt, um, does the matching between the, the grids or the grid to the points and pulls out the matched pairs and computes the statistics, those data can be loaded into um, the metdata DB, um, and uh, you can uh, perform uh, analysis either using MetViewer or MetExpress. 
or actually just um, the, the suite of metcalpy and metplotpy on the command line. So here's one typical data flow. You go from um, met, you use uh, metdb load into metdb into metcalpy and, and metviewer um, and metplotpy. All of that is wrapped up um, using the, the Python um, scripting format plus. Here's an example um, using MetExpress, which is a lighter weight user interface, um, doesn't have as, quite as much flexibility, has predefined plots and, and queries and so forth. Or if you want to run on the command line, um, there's uh, you can use MetCalcPy, MetPlotPy to, to do your um, statistics computation and your plotting. And we'll be going over how to do this um, throughout the, the training session. So in summary, uh, the Met Plus analogy, if you think of it in terms of the car, um, then Met is the statistical engine. That's what does all the, um, the, the hard work. Um, but you can't really go anywhere with just Met. You have to have some way of, of driving the, the data through um, all the different tools. So that's what Met Plus is. It provides the chassis and the steering and the wheels and everything and, and keeps everything together. And then the Met Plus analysis suite um, are basically the accessories that makes the, the process better, um, makes it easier to, to do the analysis and, and do your, um, <coughs> excuse me, do, do your analysis. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm um, getting kind of, uh, I have a lot of coughing going on right now. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's the overview of the core tool, Met. And you can see on the color coding that um, we have a lot of tools that are focused on, um, on uh, reformatting and handling common data formats. Then we have um, a few tools that are, are focused on plotting, but those are designed to just be quick look plots, just to make sure that the data are in the format um, and uh, you know, look the way they're supposed to before they go into the MetPlus tools. We have our statistics tools. Um, and then those are uh, generally write out um, ASCII output and NetCDF output. Um, and then those can be packed into our analysis tools, um, both the command line tools like mode analysis, stat analysis, and, and so forth, but also um, into those um, user interfaces. Um, so here's some uh, examples of some of the, the methods that are available and, and the tools that are available. We have um, traditional st statistics um, that are uh, primarily computed in um, grid stat, point stat, and series analysis. We have um, ensemble stat, which computes um, uh, ensemble-related statistics. Um, and, uh, and probability statistics are also computed in, in grid stat, point stat, and series analysis. We have spatial methods, um, method for object-based diagnostic evaluation, uh, um, domain decomposition, wavelet stat, and then um, uh, measures such as um, distance measures and, and so forth. And then we have tropical cyclone tools for looking at track and intensity error, looking at rapid intensification and so forth, as well as um, looking at um, TC genesis. Um, we also have tools that um, look at the distribution of, of fields um, and uh, uh, develop a joint um, PDF. And um, we have one tool um, right now that takes um, a, a different perspective and looks at um, the, uh, the environment um, with respect to the radius and maximum wind for tropical cyclones. We have a lot of masking capability. We'll, we'll be going over that um, next week. We have automated regridding within the tools themselves. Um, I already mentioned Python embedding. Um, we do have um, the ability to, to go from point data to um, gridded um, uh, representation uh, using uh, the point to grid tool that was prim primarily developed um, to handle uh, local storm reports um, for severe weather and so forth, but it can also be used for high density data sets as well. Um, there was a question, uh, will these slides be available? And, and the answer is yes. I'm sorry I'm going through this very quickly, but we do want to get to um, getting you set up and running. 
Um, here are some additional um, addition or recent additions um, that are focused more on, on diagnostics. Um, for example, this is the joint PDFs um, that you can, um, you know, have a comparison between two different fields and, and look at their relationship. Um, we have uh, categorical statistics for tropical cyclone genesis as well as any other kind of event that can be defined, um, as well as looking at um, the patterns of, of TC genesis. Uh, we, uh, for S2S diagnostics, um, we have um, things like Hoffmuller diagrams and space-time coherence and, and so forth. Um, and uh, uh, the ability to, to use multivariate analysis at this point for looking at objects. Um, the ability to look at the errors with respect to um, you know, spatial representation. Uh, looking at um, things uh, from, from um, radius of maximum wind. Uh, we just recently added in support for um, uh, tailborne Doppler radar and drop sounds for t tropical cyclones. Um, and then uh, ways to look at um, systematic errors using a feature relative approach, which we will talk about in February as well. So here's the um, uh, overview of the user's guide and, and getting help. Um, the links are, are here. Um, our user's guide um, not only um, details how, how to set things up, but we also have um, everything uh, kind of gathered together into these use cases or examples. And um, you, we have both um, examples of how to run uh, many of the, the individual tools, MET tools, as well as um, multi-step um, uh, cases uh, in order to perform more, uh, more uh, complicated verification um, methods. Um, if you need help, um, we have our discussions board right now that um, you can go and, and post a question and um, either the community will answer it or our MET plus um, support staff will, um, will answer it. Um, and there, no question is a dumb question. Um, you can always ask a question and, and um, there will be, um, you know, the, a good way to, to get an answer through the um, discussions board. We also have our training videos. Um, we are developing our um, library of training videos and um, many of uh, these recorded sessions um, will um, you know, be able to, to fill in um, the, the necessary information that, that's needed for the community to adopt MET Plus. Um, how, to, how to actually get MET Plus, um, we have a downloads page. Um, if you uh, go to that, you'll see that the, the most um, recent uh, fully supported coordinated release um, is uh, shown here in, in the green. Um, but we are also um, uh, releasing our development. Um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, our, our betas, um, which are our development um, releases um, in order for uh, the community to um, do testing and so forth. Um, so you'll notice that um, we have uh, MET Plus is um, the, the supported release is 4.0.0 right now. Um, and we're working on um, our development of uh, MET Plus 4.1.0. And we're at um, beta four. So we've done four different, um, just kind of like development releases in order for people to, to do testing. Um, oh, one, I also wanted to point out on here, um, we have a list of existing builds that we support and, and how to um, you know, get the Docker instance. Um, and then there's also release notes um, associated not only with the, the supported release, but also these beta releases. So you can see what has been added um, for each one of the, the development cycles. So here's an example of, of looking at the existing builds. Um, if you come over to the existing builds page, um, there are these you know, uh, accordion dropdowns. So we have um, support for um, several NCAR machines, um, support for several NOAA machines, some additional um, just community uh, machines, and then Docker Hub for the Docker instance. Um, so what's next today? Um, go ahead and, and ask your questions in chat. Um, we're going to um, uh, introduce you to our training videos um, in just a second. Our team, one of our team members, um, George McCabe, is going to be doing that. Um, after we 
as a as a whole, um, you know, watch a training video on, on how to set up um, the the training session. Um, then we will um, break out into groups. Um, if you're going to be working on AWS Cloud, um, then uh, we will have you join um, our breakout group uh, through a, another Google Meet. Um, we'll put those into the chat also, so you can just click on it. It's also um, listed in the invitation for um, the meeting today. If you're working on Hera or Jet, then um, we'll ask you to go to that breakout group, and Cheyenne has its own breakout group. Um, everyone else, um, feel free to just stay in this session and, and watch us step through how to um, set up um, the tutorial environment for either a bash or a C, C, um, CSH um, shell. Um, note that these breakout groups are only for this meeting and moving forward, um, we're, uh, the intent is to have everybody in the same session and only break out if, if you're running into problems as, as we do the hands-on. And then um, feel free to visit the website to review the first eight weeks of agenda. I also wanted to say thanks to our current team of um, uh, that are working very hard on, on MET+. Plus. Um, it's a mix of, of uh, scientists, statisticians, and, and engineers. And uh, I personally feel that we have a really great team, and, and I really appreciate um, all the work that they're doing um, to make this possible for the community. And so with that, um, if you have any general questions about MET+, Plus, once again, I, I encourage you to use our discussion forum. Um, here is where you can find the code, the users and developers guides, and um, you know if you uh, need to um, refresh your memory about the training session, we do have um, the the uh, training session website, which I I did want to point out. Um, now we, we do have a tab that has um, a lot of the basic information about the training and the support and, and how to set up for um, the tutorial environment and, and so forth. Um, we also have, um, uh, I have set up a, a Google, um, I have set up, a, excuse me, a Google folder that, Um, it's external drive, but basically we have all the, uh, it's not being friendly. Sorry about that. Let me bring it up. There we go. Uh, we have, um, the, a list of the training participants. I, I have not added in the people who um, have joined in the past couple of, of days, so you, you may be missing if you um, were on the wait list and so forth. But I'm, I provided this to, to one, give you um, an idea of, of what came through for platform preference um, through the registration. So if, if um, what we have for your preference is incorrect, please um, let us know. Um, as well as uh, you may want to look at um, who else from your organization is participating in this training session so that you can coordinate um, moving forward on, on um, maybe a, a local install or, or something like that. So that is available. We will also um, uh, for the cloud um, people that are, are working on the cloud, um, in this uh, Google Doc or in this Google folder are the IP addresses for the login, and we'll go over how to use those um, in that breakout session. And then we will be keeping track of, of the chats and the questions that occur um, during this session um, and, and so forth. And so that, will, that document will be populated um, after uh, our training session. So I went longer than I wanted to. Sorry about that. Um, I guess at this point, do we have any, um, to the rest of the MetPlus team, do we have any um, questions that we should address immediately before we get started with um, showing how to, to set up the, the training environment? Okay. Um, do we have, uh, are there any questions out there 
The only question I see um, is from uh, in chat, are, are these slides available for folks who have joined by phone? And um, I will uh, I, I will put them into the Google um, folder right now. Sorry that I, I didn't have it up there to begin with. I didn't realize that we had people just joining by phone. Um, so you can go through them after the fact as well as through the recording. Uh, one question is, can we use MetPlus on PC or MacBook? Um, we, we have successfully installed um, MetPlus uh, both on Mac and uh, on a PC. On a PC, you would have to have a Linux emulator, um, uh, like a like um, uh, MOBA Xterm or something like that. Um, and if, uh, if you are running into problems with getting um, it installed on Mac or, or um, on the PC, I would suggest, um, you know, writing for help in discussions. Uh, next question is, I'm installing MetPlus in our Unix environment and um, belong on the, the fourth breakout group. Can I also have a cloud login? Um, Barbara, yes. Um, if you want to, to jump into the cloud breakout, um, we, we do have a, a couple of extra um, cloud logins um, available and we can accommodate that. Okay, um, at this point, go ahead and keep putting your, um, your questions in the chat and our team will work on answering them. But at, um, at this point, I think I'm gonna stop presenting and pass us over to George so that he can um, kind of get us started on, on getting set up. So I'm going to stop presenting. And George, are you ready to go? I am. Thank you, Tara. Okay. Uh, so, hello, everyone. I'm George McCabe. I'm one of the MetPlus developers. And I'm going to show you a quick video that covers the basics of the tutorial. Then, as Tara mentioned, we'll break into groups based on the environment you are using for the tutorial and uh, help you get set up. And there'll be uh, members of the MetPlus team in each of those subgroups to help you out with any issues and answer any questions. Um, so this page is found on the MetPlus training webpage in the online tutorial topics chapter. Um, it contains the video and then a script of all the content and other information that's useful. Um, and there is a link to this webpage from the MetPlus training series webpage that Tara showed earlier um, in case you need to revisit any of this info. Um, so I'll go ahead and show this video and then we can break into our groups. Welcome to the Find and Navigate the Tutorial video, part of the Session 1 setup portion of MetPlus 4.0. I think you need to turn up the volume. This video covers how to deploy It's all the way up on my computer. Um, if, if somebody else wants to share, they could turn it up, possibly. It's, it's kind of a quiet video. I think we can't hear anything. Sorry about that. We didn't test out um, playing a video <laughs> on uh, on the the Google Meet um, session. So I can just go ahead and go to the web page and and step through the information. Okay. Thank you. Um, so from my memory of what is in this video, um, I show how to find the um, the Met Plus. Um, web page from the DT Center web page. So you go to dtcenter.org, click on community code, and select the Met Plus um, drop down. George, hey. yeah. yeah, it looks like John raised his hand. What did you want to say, John? Yeah, actually, Dan has a good suggestion. Go ahead, Dan. So uh, Dan said, George, try, try stopping sharing and then reshare, but just the Google Chrome tab. Yeah, sorry, that, my microphone wasn't on quick enough. Yeah, just reshare the tab, George, and I think the audio will pipe through the, the Google Meet then. Okay, I will try that.
Okay, can everybody see this tab? Yep, I can see it, George. Okay, thanks. Welcome to the Find and Navigate Much the tutorial better. video, Great. part of the Session 1 setup portion of the MetPlus 4.0 online tutorial. George, can you mute, though, too, when you're doing this? Yes. Oh, George, it stopped playing. Hey, hey, George, we're not seeing the video. And you're muted now, so, um, yep. It worked for a minute, George, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering. Here okay. it is, it's back. The content in this video corresponds to the online tutorial section titled MetPlus Setup, which is found in Session 1, MetPlus Setup slash Grid to Grid. To find the online tutorial, navigate to dtcenter.org, then select MetPlus from the Community Code drop-down menu. Next, click on User Support. You may not see the menu bar on the right side of the window. This occurs when the width of the window is not large enough to display it. If this is the case, navigate to the bottom of the page to find this menu. You can also adjust the zoom or width of your window, and it should appear on the right-hand side. Next, click on the Tutorial Online button. And finally, click on the link for the MetPlus version 4.0 tutorial. Previous versions of the online tutorial can also be found here in PDF format. The first page of the online tutorial describes the format of the instructions. Text blocks inside dark gray boxes with bold white text can be copied from the browser and pasted into the command line terminal. Text blocks inside yellow boxes contain important information or hints. Text blocks inside light blue boxes contain instructions for the user to perform. And text blocks inside light gray boxes contain sample output from a command or contents of a file. Please note that some of the commands listed in the tutorial instructions use specific applications like VI to open or edit files and Ocular to view PDF, PostScript, and image files. Users are encouraged to use their preferred tools instead of these suggested tools if they are more comfortable with them. Also please note that if you are running the ins tutorial instructions inside a Docker container, then the visualization tools used in the tutorial may not be available inside the container. To run these commands, you will have to mount the output directory inside Docker to your local file system and run those tools from there. And here we have the first instruction of the tutorial to telling us to click the link that will take us to the next page of the tutorial. This next page contains a brief overview of the MetPlus wrappers and a list of links to useful resources such as the user's guide and the GitHub pages for the various MetPlus components. This page describes the prerequisites for running the tutorial instructions. It is assumed that you have already installed MetPlus, including the Met executables and the MetPlus wrapper scripts, and that you have obtained the sample input data needed to run the exercises. If you are going through the tutorial on a machine that has been pre-configured to run the tutorial, such as Hera or Cheyenne, then these steps have already been completed for you. If you are going through the tutorial on your own workstation, then you will need to perform the installation steps yourself. If you have not already done so, you can refer to the installation videos and the user's guide. Click on the appropriate link to navigate to the instructions that are specific to the environment you are using. For all environments, the instructions include steps to determine a working area for the tutorial, creating a directory that will contain your configuration and output files, and copy a few files into the directory. If you are running on your own workstation, we provide instructions for using Bash and C Shell. We recommend using Bash if you do not have a preference. The next video in this tutorial depends on the environment you are using. If you are running the tutorial on a reconfigured environment, okay. um, I apologize for the audio issues. Um, so we will now break into different groups to um, 
to get everything set up for each of you. Um, Tara, do you have the links? Are we going to put those in the chat? Yeah, I just put them in the chat. For some reason, they didn't. Yeah. Okay, so um, everybody, if if you are um, going to be using the cloud, go ahead and and um, use the the um, the link to the um, cloud meet. If you're using here and Jet, go to that meeting. If you're using Cheyenne, go to that meeting. And everybody else, stay here. Um, and then uh, we will just all reconvene. Um, back at this meeting um, next week to start into, uh, you know, learning how to use MIPLUS. Hi, everyone. Looks like uh, we got a good cloud group. Um, so this should actually be fairly easy. Um, and uh, we will just get started. So I added some things into the um, Hi, y'all. This is uh, John Halligatway. I work on uh, the Met development. And I see there's a question in the chat uh, from Zooming. If, if you have a further question this afternoon or later, then yes, we encourage you to post a question to Met Plus Discussions. Um, I can share my screen to demonstrate that. Um, let me do that now. So here you'd go to DT Center, or no, uh, github.com DT Center Met Plus. I'll make my screen a little bit bigger. And one of the tabs across the top here is discussion. So you click on discussions. And if you, there's, there's a couple of blurbs here. You can read the welcome statement about Met Plus discussions and get help for, uh, you know, advice on how to send us data if you need to send us data to to diagnose an issue. Um, you would just create a new discussion, and you pick a category. Um, you can, uh, you know, recommend that you use one of these existing ones that has answers enabled. And if you don't know uh, exactly what the question, you know, you can't classify it. You can always just post to incoming, and then we'll 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 recategorize it as needed and then give it a title and type your question or discussion there. Any, any questions about how to use discussions? All 
All right, Tara. So, um, what are the next steps in this in this uh, meeting? Uh, I, I think it's probably to go to um, the online tutorial and run through the um, steps for um, setting up the tutorial environment for Bash and then for CSH. Okay. Um, let me. Do you want me to drive, Tara, or do you? Yes. Want to please. Yeah, please, because I'm jumping back and forth. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Thank you. So, the the issue is that this assumes that you have already installed Met and Met Plus on your machine. Um, can I get a show of hands of people who have actually done this or, or who are running on a machine on which Met and Met Plus is already available? So David Huber has. Uh, there's all right. We're 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 cranking up here. Over 15 people have. Um, it is unrealistic for us, uh, for, for those of you who have not, um, it's unrealistic for us to work through that um, with everybody in a call um, in the next you know, 15 minutes. You can go ahead and put your hands down now. Um, so what I'll do is, is go through on my laptop, and actually I, I should have prepped more for this, but so it goes. Um, Sorry about that. No, it's okay. So let me go to the, um, the link. So this would be vtcenter.org. Um, okay, Met Plus components. I know what we have under user support. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the online tutorial, Met Plus version 4.0. So we're working through session one here. So um, let me open this up Met Plus setup and Met Plus initial setup. Um, and if you look down the side here, there's Op, you know, instructions for running on existing machines. And we're just going to go here to the to setting up the tutorial environment for Bash. And I'll select that. So I'm going to copy and paste this link into the chat um, in case anyone needs to, to get there. So um, <clears throat> what do we do? Well, first, you'll see throughout uh, Met Plus in the configuration files, You'll see things that say slash path to, um, and actually, let me let me stop for a second and and point out that throughout the tutorial, it, as George mentioned in that video he played, um, the, these uh, things are in yellow boxes are are basically in, intended to highlight content. Make sure you read the things in the yellow boxes. Um, things in blue boxes are telling you to take some action. Um, so click on a button, change directory, do something. Uh, things in these gray bo boxes are basically commands that you type. Um, but whenever you see the path to, that indicates that you want to substitute in path to with whatever the path is on your actual machine. So let me go, I'll, I'll bring up this uh, window here. And actually, okay, so I'm going to follow these commands. Um, I'm going to create a directory named MetPlus version 4.0 tutorial. So I'm just going to control C and control V that to copy and paste it into my terminal. Create that uh, directory. I'm going to copy this command and paste it in. And then we're going to just create a couple of directories, uh, one for user config and one for output in this top level directory. Okay. So the next step is to get a, uh, a, a, a file, to download a file from the uh, dtcenter.org website. And we're, we're going to use wget to retrieve that file that, that is uh, for the tutorial setup. So I'm actually going to copy and paste both commands and run them. Um, so I, it ran the first one. I'm going to hit Enter to run the second one. So this retrieved two files. One named Met Plus version 4.0.0 tutorial setup, another one named tutorial.com. So I'm going to stop here and, and find out is there anyone who's trying to follow along and, and is having trouble? George, go ahead. Or, George, did you still have your hand up from earlier? I think you must have. Okay. Um, okay, so everyone is that's following along is has completed these steps so far all right so 
The next thing we need to do is edit this shell script uh, to point to, uh, to define some paths, met plus build base, met build base, and met plus data. So I'm going to create a second window and make this guy bigger. And in the first window, I'm going to use VI to open up Met Plus Tutorial Setup. Um, you can use whatever text editor you'd like. So we're going to leave this Met Plus Tutorial Burr command alone. And here in this file where we see path two, these are the things that we need to update. So there's three paths. So first of all is the Met Plus uh, build base. Um, is there anyone who wants to see, like I could show you how to clone the repository from GitHub or just download a tar file. Should I go, maybe I should go through those steps. Let me go, um, let me, let me go download the 4.0 release to show you what that looks like. So um, I'll start by going to the DT Center website and go to Met Plus and download. And here, this is what we want to find, Met Plus 4.0.0. So this is this this uh, is available on GitHub. So this takes me to the release on GitHub. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see the source code as a zip file and a tar.gz file. Either one works. I'm just going to, um, I guess I'll just click it and download it. So that'll copy it to my downloads directory on my, on my Mac. I wonder how large this is. Oh, it looks like it's done. Okay. So um, I'm going to go into my uh, tutorial directory that I created, and I'll just install it there. Let's see where I am here. Users Giants G tutorial. So I will move the file, my downloaded file. To this location, and I'm going to untar it. Tar minus xvzf. Now I have Met Plus 4.0.0 here, and so now I'll go edit my uh, tutorial setup script to point to the Met Plus build base. I'll erase that. Do PWD. that and paste it in here. And now just to double check to make sure I haven't made any mistakes, I'm going to actually type LS, copy and paste that and type LS and there it is. So I think we're, I think we're in good shape. Now the Met build base, um, it would take much longer to install Met from scratch. So I'm going to just use an existing build that already exists on my machine. Um, and I know that that's in the development area met dash main v 10.0 so uh and it's in met so in this directory um i have you know met installed met version 10.0 installed i'm going to copy this path and paste it in here okay so now i have my met plus build base the met build base and now I need the net plus data. Let's see if we have a path listed here in the um, tutorial setup instructions for the data. So I'm going to ask for an assist here. Is there anybody, any of the other met? Uh, Plus, folks on the call, can you tell me where to go retrieve the data? It looks like, who do we have? Tracy's here. Dan Adrianson was here earlier. Yeah. Dan, any idea where I go grab the data? That's just for the use cases, John? Well, this is for the... Uh, for the data for the tutorial 
So it, it's mostly the use cases, yeah. Uh, let me look. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I got to look around for a second. Hold on. While we're doing this, I any, have, yeah, go ahead. I have downloaded it from the site of the sample data. This, uh, this sense code med plus med plus underscore data version 4.0. Okay, do you want to put the link into the chat? No, 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 no. I, I downloaded it previously. Oh, okay. It, um, more than five gigabytes. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that'll take a while. I, I have one question, John. Yes. Uh, uh, I use Cosmo and VRF NMM. Can I use this MedPlus to um, analyze this uh, output of these models? So can you say the name of the model against more slowly? You, is it WARF? Uh, VRF, VRF NMM, yes. WARF NMM, and Cosmo. I'm not familiar with Cosmo. Um, I mean, ultimately, what it comes down to is just data file formats. So uh, WARF NMM uh, writes out NetCDF files, and yes. they can be post But it's rotated in NetCDF. Yes. So um, we, we recommend that users post-process using the unified post-processor. Yes, I use it. And the output of that is GRIB1 yeah. or GRIB2. Yes, yes, correctly. And, and so, yes, we... Uh, met reads grib one and grib two data very well um so it, it all comes down to file formats um what about the cosmo output files what 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 type oh, of net cdf and grib one okay so yeah i'd recommend using the uh the grib one uh output yes. so while met does so you know we're going to cover this in in future um future talks um but met uh, the MET tools can read GRIB1, GRIB2, and then a, a couple different flavors of NetCDF. And one of them is CF compliant NetCDF, which so climate forecast. Let me point out um, that actually let me let me show you how to get here from the from the website. So if I go if I'm at the MET Plus website and I go to uh, the down, or let me just go to documentation. If you go to, well, this is the MET plus documentation. Let me go to download and under MET, you'll see a link to the user's guide. So this user's guide is available at read the docs. And one of the, the third chapter is MET data IO. And so this chapter discusses these details I'm mentioning now. Um, you know, what input file formats that it can handle. Um, so I, I recommend taking a look at this chapter. I'll put that in the chat. Okay, any other questions from folks on the call? All right, let me, I'm going to bring up Slack and talk to George. Um, Okay, so we're still hunting around for the input data. And as was pointed out, it is a large, uh, large amount of data. So um, it will take a, a little while for you to download it, certainly more than the four minutes left in this, in this hour. Um, once you do, then um, you will move on to the next step. Actually, let me just go ahead and I'm going to put in a... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to decide to create a subdirector here named data and which which doesn't have anything in it yet. I'm just going to set up my uh, the script to use that. Or I guess I'll call it net plus for data. And then um, let's move on. Let's pretend like we have the data and let's move on to the next step which is verify your environment is set correctly. So, so the same 
uh, data tar files can be found here. So uh, let me point out this. So these are all, this is the full set of sample data tar files. So I'll put this into the chat for this call. And, uh, but I, you know, as I mentioned, it'll take too long to download it, it all in the next couple minutes. So I want to go on to this next page, which is verify your environment is correct. Um, so we go into our, uh, the, the top level directory or our tutorial directory and am I on this? Okay. So we, what, what we want to do is source that script that we created. So I just sourced that and that set some environment variables. And now we want to check our path. So which run met plus is this in our path? It is. You see the um, run met plus is here. And now let's check to make sure that um, the met tools are in our pass. So I'll run the points that tool. And that when you run the met tools without any command line arguments, it just prints the usage statement, which points that you can see that it is in the, uh, you know, it's set based on the, uh, how I set up that shell script. Now let's make sure that the tutorial dir is set correctly. Okay, list out that directory. There's some, you know, the the, the data we've gotten used to get going. Uh, let's make sure that met build base. See how that's set? Yep, that's how we set it uh, in that shell script. If you list it out, you see that there's a top level met directory, and uh, for extra measure, you can see that all the met executables are in the bin subdirectory of that of that top level directory. And we also have the met plus build base. And in that met plus build base, you'll see things like the build components, CI for continuous integration, docs, that sort of stuff. Uh, met, met plus data is set to this at the net plus data but this is the problem i have it is empty because i i haven't actually downloaded the data yet so um i guess your task before the before next week is to confirm that your environment is set up correctly and retrieve all the data that we'll use in the coming weeks okay With that, we're right at 10 o'clock. So I think we should go ahead and adjourn unless, but I'll stay on if there's any if, if questions from other folks, I, I can stay on as long as needed and, and, and help out. So uh, we have a question. Do we need to go through the setup guide, set plus directories, configuration files, overview um, as well? Uh, you certainly could. It would, it would be worthwhile to, to read up on that. Yes. And uh, the question is, do we need to download the data set? Um, yes, you do need to download the data set and, and put it um, on your local computer and, and know where you're putting it. So there's the question, is there a shortcut to saving the chat info for today? I will copy and paste the chat and post it into a Google Doc in that um, public um, Met Plus drive. Yeah, we already have a Google Doc there. I, I'll, I can paste that um, into the chat real quick so that you have access to it. And I can send you all the comments too. The Google sends them to me when I do recordings. Oh, excellent.
So there's um, <clears throat> the link to the, the um, external Google folder that has um, not only the participant list, but will have the, the notes from today. Any other questions? So one more detail. Um, I, I received word back from George that we really only need three of these data files for the, for the tutorial. So I'm going to post in here a wget command um, followed by the name of the of three different tar files to retrieve um, and that, that will you know, be used for the first few weeks of, the, um, of these training sessions. There you All right. So um, we're three minutes past. Do we have any last minute questions or sh shall we end for the day? Okay. Then uh, we will see everybody back here next week, uh, same time. And uh, thank you for uh, your. Uh, interest and attention and uh, let's uh, starting next week it's going to get fun. <laughs>